Coming up on today's episode, unboxing Panasonic's VT25, their ultimate HDTV, and yes, people, it does 3D. Do I need a butt kicker for the perfect home theater audio system? Pikes Peak looking great on HD. And of course, the Blu-ray releases for the week of July 13th, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode of HD Nation is brought to you by Gamefly. Check out Gamefly.com slash HD Nation for a free trial account. Netflix. Go to Netflix.com slash HD Nation for your free trial membership and GoDaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray online satellite cable over the air. If it is in HD, we like it. Yes, we do. This is this is one that this is news that's close to your heart. Uh, it is. Uh, is Ethernet the new HDMI? If LG, Sony, and Samsung have anything to do with it, something called HD Base T will be the new home theater connection of choice. Built around technology from Valence Semiconductor, the fourth partner in the HD Base T alliance, the spec promises to carry, quote, HD signal, HD video, audio, 100 Base T Ethernet, power over cable, and various control signals. And we're talking full HD video up to 100 meters and up to 100 watts of power for the devices. When will the new Miracle port show up on HD hardware? Well, the Alliance is hoping for 2011, and I'll bet you even money it will be alongside of an <laughs> HDMI port as well. Yeah, that's a, a bet hedger. It looks like they want to do it to like simplify control for multiple devices, and, and also I think because everybody, I'm, I'm thinking everybody hates paying the HDMI royalties, but... It's four cents a port. Wow. It's, it's next to nothing for the manufacturers. Oh, it was four cents a port last year. I haven't checked to see if maybe they maybe upped it a penny or something, but they are penny pitchers. I'm just happy that for installers and do-it-yourselfers, you're going to have a, a do-it-yourself termin. You're going to be able to terminate the right. cable yourself, and do runs up to 100 feet. Uh, that, that's really all I'm looking forward to do, and uh, I can't wait. I think it's a good thing. I suppose it was gigabit, not 100 base T. Ah, ah. Easy to one. Yeah, well. Three terabyte drives are here, people. Kind of. I expect the Western Digital to be the first one out the gate later this year with a three terabyte drive. But Seagate's three terabyte free agent GoFlex desk. That's a mouthful. This external drive is the first, well, three terabyte drive on the block. External drives only for now, USB 2.0 only, unless you buy one of Seagate's nifty GoFlex bases, which means you can snap off the USB 2.0 base for USB 3 or Firewire 800 to get faster transfers. We haven't seen one yet, but the register is reporting that it contains a single three and a half inch, three terabyte drive. Now, if I can just score four of these puppies for my Drobo, I will be a happy like 10 terabyte camper. Nice. I yes. need more storage too. Yeah, three terabytes is, I think somebody, somebody calculated that three terabytes was 120 HD movies, which is kind of frightening when you think about is it, it. Is it that many? Yeah. I don't know. Blu-rays? With or without extras. Oof. So much stuff there, so much data. <laughs> In other news, DirecTV and Panasonic launched a 24-hour 3D network last week. N3D, a.k.a. Channel 103 for any DirecTV subscriber with an H21 or higher receiver and, of course, a 3D HD TV and glasses. It'll have NASCAR, Daytona, MLB, All-Star Games, and according to Engadget HD, July's schedule is packed with demo content like Guitar Center Sessions with Peter Gabriel and Jane's Addiction and Dinosaurs, Giants of Patagonia. There's more 3D content on Direct TV, but you can read Engadget's article to find it. Yeah, Gadget HD, the like, listing of all the places scattered around DirecTV, you can find the uh, 3D stuff. Hey, if you're thinking new surround sound receivers, Sony, Onkyo, and Best Buy's house brand Insignia all have new models from Bargain Basement 5.1 to 3D integrated top-of-the-line beasties for you to check out. Question for the HD Nation crew. Do you have a favorite review site for like, home theater receivers? We're curious what you think. Email us, hdnation at revision3.com. We're wondering what your favorite sources for those are. Good question. Please send that email. Hey, we're getting our first 3D HD TV in for review. In fact, we'll be unboxing Panasonic's latest later in this episode. And uh, whatever 3D does in the living room, it's the big buzzword for Hollywood blockbusters, yeah. without a doubt. No, it's kind of ridiculous. Marketsaw.blogspot.com is kind of an insider's 3D movie production site. It says Transformers 3 will be native 3D. Like Avatar, that's unlike the uh, last few 3D movies we've seen, which were conversions in post. We're talking classic. Clash of the Titans, Alice in Wonderland, and Airbenders. 
Pugh, the movie makes me ill. It looks like Tron and the new Resident Evil have uh, some native 3D shot on the area. Alexa paste cameras, too. It's the same ones that were used for Avatar. It'll be fun to see that one. Patrick spitting noises aside, <laughs> Market Saw claims that 3D conversion in post can look good, you just need a year to do it. As in, you shouldn't stuff it at the tail end of a major feature to get your buzzwords on for a weak movie, Airbender. We're looking at you. So, <laughs> <laughs> some interesting info. Read the spiel we link to in the show notes. Yeah, marketsaw.blogspot.com. Good stuff. Probably that is the inside scoop on the 3D, like basically like Hollywood 3D production on the cameras and hands on the nice, I like to know about the tools. Hey, a quick uh, Hulu Plus update. There's no surround sound. It is workable on an HD Aww. TV, but not great. As in, you won't mistake this for Blu-ray. You might mistake it for cable or, uh, or satellite, especially satellites. And the availability on shows is peculiar, shifty, as in it differs between Hulu and Hulu Plus, as in some of the stuff on Hulu may not be on Plus or may show up later for reasons I don't particularly understand. Extra resolution, though, on Plus, the 720p is a big uh, plus. Do yourself a favor, download the desktop app if you've got a home theater PC, and don't be shocked if some titles don't play on your HD TV if you're running it through the back of your Samsung. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets sorted soon. I have a suspicion they're maybe doing some re-encoding of videos or something like that. Good we'll to find know. out. It's still in beta. Yes. Yes, you beta test. Are you paying for the beta? I'm paying for the beta. Oh, you're a good man. Well, no, I, need, I wanted to <laughs> test it so I, I could talk about it on Techzilla and HD Nation. I'm a little jealous. Don't be. Let's thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly. Gamefly, people. Gamefly.com. It is the largest online video game rental surface. We're talking 7,000 new and classic titles across pretty much any console or handheld you're likely to still be carrying. For $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can score one to four games at a pop and keep them for as long as they like. No late fees, no due dates, and shipping to your house and to their house always free. Once you're done playing the game, send it back. Gamefly is going to send you the next available game on your list so you can get your game on as quickly as possible. You really like the game you're playing? Do yourself a favor, click Keep It on the Gamefly website. You're going to get the game at a discounted price, and Gamefly is going to mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Want to try out this bargain site? You should, people, because HD Nation fans get a two-week free trial, but only if you go to Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. Do us a favor here at HD Nation. Support our sponsors like Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. It's July, and we all know what that means. San Diego Comic-Con. Comics, films, TV shows, toys, and costumes. The show has it all, and it's only a few weeks away. So to honor that most sacred of geek pilgrimages, we present to you our top five superhero movies on Blu-ray. Again, these are movies that are available on Blu-ray, in the store, as this list was written. All right? That's, that's a warning. We're just saying. <laughs> we may not have your favorite movie on here, but it's only because when we wrote this list, it wasn't out on Blu-ray. Just saying. Okay? It just, it just, people, get, people get intense about superhero but, movies. But there's a release date. Yeah, well. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's here. Anyway. Do you want to do this one or you want me to do this Numero one? Numero uno. I like this movie a lot, actually. We all like this movie. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Watchmen, yes. <clears throat> Considered to be unfilmable for decades, the Watchmen movie turned what could have been a train wreck into one of the most faithful translations of any comic book to the silver screen. What about the Black Freighter? What about the Black Freighter? I'll explain later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. Guess who hasn't run the, read the comic yet? <laughs> oh, no, I have not. Yeah. Featuring the direction prowess of Zack Snyder, Watchmen takes place in an alternate timeline where superheroes are a reality and a disbanded superhero team tries to uncover the mystery behind the death of their former colleague. Filled with 1980s culture pastiche and a surprising amount of real human drama in this film is both a visual knockout and a great story. Coming up on number two, we have The Dark Knight. Yeah! Oh yeah. Christopher Nolan's second Batman flick, The Dark Knight, follows a more experienced Batman and reluctant symbol of vigilante justice on the verge of toppling all of Gotham's major crime syndicates, only to be thwarted by his greatest adversary, the Joker, played by the late Heath Ledger. Dude, you're giving it all away. I know, I just, I just, no. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I won't tell you how it ends. Anyway, <laughs> it's the Joker who ultimately becomes the focal point of the movie as Batman must overcome self-doubt and fatigue to save the soul of his beloved city. From the cinematography to special effects and ultimately the story, The Dark Knight is unquestionably the finest Batman movie to date. Here, here. I just gotta say that, and the scenes that were shot in IMAX are phenomenal looking. Yeah. The very beginning of the movie, and you'll see other scenes too, in, in full frame, 16 by 9 on uh, on the Blu-ray I wish they just least. could have afforded to shoot the whole thing in 16 by 9. That, watching the movie at home, that was the most distracting thing, is yeah. watching it go from letterbox to full screen to letterbox to full screen. Ugh. 
Yes. Minor quirk, anyway. This one's for Roger. Superman, the movie starring a then-unknown Christopher Reeve. Well, he was kind of well-known if you're in the New York theater. Back in 1978, Superman helped superhero movies transcend their two-dimensional stereotypes and B-movie delegation for kiddies and provide a thoughtful, genuinely sympathetic hero. Applying some of the best large-scale visual effects in a pre-digital era, Superman also pioneered new man effects and wire work to make Superman's flying scene look realistic. And trust me, I was eight, it did. So if you're interested in seeing how special effects worked before computers and some of the best cinematography in the business, at least for the late 70s, check out Superman, people. Oh, Spider-Man. Next up, yeah, Spider-Man, one of Marvel Comics' first big budget blockbuster films. Spider-Man gives a somewhat faithful retelling of how Peter Parker turned in from that mild-mannered student into NYC's most recognizable hero. Mm -hmm. Although the story is rather pedestrian and acting is unsurprisingly average. I disagree. Roger wrote this one, didn't he? He probably did. He's, He's filling my head with on him. <laughs> Oh, be a hater, it Roger. is the special effects, though, of Spider-Man swinging through the streets of New York that really brings home the experience. Tied together with the immersive surround sound effects, Spider-Man is one movie that will definitely showcase any home theater setup. I will say the physics in the original Spider-Man for the web swinging was a little off. Was it a little? Just to me. A little arcadey? Having spent a lot of time watching people swing from buildings in New York City. Really now? Iron Man! Woo! Marvel's second knockout superhero movie, or I should say second knock it, it, superhero movie hit. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just, Robert Downey Jr., amazing. It's just an absolute perfect stage. It's his portrayal of a wealthy, egotistical military weapons industrialist and part-time alcoholic who must overcome his self-destructive behavior, or at least shove it aside for a little while, to save himself, his friends, and his business from his ruthless business partner, the deftly played by Jeff Bridges, who referred to this as the ultimate college movie, for reasons I'll let you find out on the internet. Amazing CGI, incredible dialogue. Iron Man is a must for any action movie fan. I still need to see number two. That's number two on Blu-ray. Oh, man. Is it coming? Is it out? I, not yet. Not yet. Soon. Okay. Soon. Up next, we have Hellboy, based on <laughs> Mike Magnolia's comic series about a demon child summoned by Nazi occultists to help them take over the world, oh, yeah. but ends up combating the forces of darkness around the world instead. Stars Ron Perlman as the eponymous Hellboy. The movie takes a few liberties with the source material and provides a character that is immediately recognizable and likable. Along with Selma Blair as Hellboy's love interest, Liz Sherman, this Guillermo del Toro-directed film is a sight to behold in HD and a great addition to any Blu-ray library. It's fun. Yeah. Ron Perlman's awesome. Now, we can't say for sure how it's going to turn out. Horrible things could happen in the transfer. Roger Ebert could destroy all of the master tapes. But Roger, and quite frankly the rest of us, hope the kick-ass Blu-ray releasing in August will be just as phenomenal as the movie was in the theater. The movie he watched three times, paying out of his own pocket. And that's the three times he'll admit to, I think there were several more. We're talking high kicks, gunshots, and a sense of humor well beyond morbid. Kick-ass is a superhero flick that should be just as fun at home as it was in the theater. And of course, Chloe's debut and Nicolas Cage finally acting like an actor again. Nice. It makes me happy. It makes me want to use my documentary voice. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> I think it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for July 13th, 2010. First up, Greenberg, starring Ben Stiller. This film's more of an indie Royal Tenenbaum style Stiller movie than a Zoolander style movie. It follows an awkward Roger Greenberg as he house sits for his brother in Los Angeles and decides to try doing nothing with his life for a while. Extras on this disc are fairly light, totaling a heaping seven minutes spread across three featurettes with a cursory glance behind the scenes and glimpses of interviews with the cast and crew. This film isn't for everyone, but if you like dry humor and a very awkward and angry Ben Stiller, check it out. Next up, In Bruges, starring Colin Farrell and Rafe Fiennes. This dark comedy tells the story of two hitmen hiding out in the tiny town of Bruges in Belgium. Things start to get hairy as they find out exactly why they've been sent away. Nominated for a Best Original Screenplay in the 2009 Academy Awards, this film won Colin Farrell a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical. It's equal parts action crime movie and hilarious English comedy, and this release includes a gag reel as well as deleted and extended scenes. Also this week, Insomnia, starring Al Pacino and Robin Williams. This 2002 film comes from the director of Memento, The Dark Knight, and the upcoming Inception. It's actually a remake of a Norwegian film and tells the story of a pair of police detectives from Los Angeles trying to solve a murder in a tiny Alaskan town so far north that the sun does not set. 
Extras on this disc include additional scenes and four featurettes, including a conversation with Nolan and Pacino. So if you want to get yourself all Nolanized in preparation for the release of Inception next week, check out Insomnia. Other releases include Alpha Dog, Assault on Precinct 13, The Bounty Hunter, Caught in the Crossfire, Chloe, Gabriel Iglesias, Hot and Fluffy, The Greatest, Middle of Nowhere, Our Family Wedding, Parasomnia, and White Collar, The Complete First Season. Time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. With more than 12 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, streaming movies and TV episodes over the internet, and sending you DVDs by mail. This week I added the 2009 sci-fi thriller Moon, starring Sam Rockwell, to my Watch Instantly queue. Time to fire up the home theater PC, or should I stream it through my HD TiVo or my PS3? Hmm, it is nice to have options. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers, and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to your home. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding base of devices that can stream movies and TV episodes from Netflix right to members' TVs are the Xbox 360, the PS3, and the Wii. Find movies you love easily. You can browse, search, or see Netflix's recommendations for you. They even have a special backup box feature that lets you get the details of any movie instantly. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash hdnation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. Panasonic was gracious enough to send us its latest and top of the line HDTV gear, 3D HDTV gear in fact. The box has arrived today and we've not yet had a chance to test anything. But we thought this would be a good opportunity to show us unboxing a new TV. And we got some suggestions for the first few steps to take when setting up any new home theater gear. So this is the TC P54 VT25. To top the line. $3,000. $3,000 street or MSRP? MSRP. Okay. I haven't, I haven't seen it too many street prices yet for this, but it's going to be probably close to that. And to go with it, they sent along their, what is that, the DMP, the BDT300 Blu-ray player. <laughs> Let's, let's get some shiny stuff to show people. <laughs> More boxes. This uh, is their next to top of the line Blu-ray player. List price $400. Uh, the 350 model of that Blu-ray player, actually, the only thing I can tell that it adds is DLNA support. So this is one step back, save you about 30, 40 bucks. And uh, we sent Serafina out to get us a full-on Blu-ray 3D movie. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs, one of the only 3D Blu-rays you can buy anywhere. Totally. How do you want to start, sir? Uh, tip number one, when you transport a TV of this size, uh, especially the bigger screen TVs, keep the box upright. It's made to take shocks if you're actually transporting this in the back of a truck or something. It's made to take shock vertically. Not horizontally. So if you're laying right. it flat, it, it had more of a tendency to flex, more of a chance to damage the product. So keep it upright. Don't cut the box open. Don't do it. Don't do it. Actually, most boxes nowadays have really good instructions right on top, including repacking. So if for any reason, you need to put it back together. Do not cut. <laughs> Remove white clips. Then lift box top from its base. Totally. What so about smaller HCTVs? Those typically do not have these clips or straps, and you do cut the tops of those boxes open and lift the TV out. Good to know. I think we have one more cool. clip. Oh, one more. Even the clips have up points on them. <laughs> yep. Keep it in all together, because you might need to return the darn thing. Lift By the carefully. way, you should move this thing as close to its final resting place as you can before oh, you start moving it around. Save the box. Yep. I'll just drag it over here. And remember to save things. all of the uh, packaging material just in case something's gone horribly wrong and you totally. need to return it. And I'd say right now also just kind of take a look around for like remotes, accessories, 3D glasses. Grab, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Grab all of that good stuff. Power save cables. It. Like here's some uh, stuff we'll need for the base stand. I say put all of this stuff into a large freezer bag if you can. If you're, especially if you're not going to use it, keep it all in one place. It makes it handy to store it. Now. We need to prepare the TV to be mounted. And right now I am finishing the assembly of the base stand. This is what we're gonna actually set the TV onto. We have a relatively pretty good stable rolling table to put this whole thing on so we know we've got a good platform. That's important. Whether you're gonna drive or mount it on a wall or put it on its stand, 
do ensure that everything is secure. These aren't exactly light objects. And you don't want to break anything. Then our base is essentially assembled. Now, on these sets, if it doesn't have a hand grip, which this one actually does, right in the back, two people, it's not so bad. I'm gonna rock that out of the way. We carefully align the arrows, set it on its home. Ta -da. The nice thing is there's basically arrows back here that tell you exactly where to line things up. Most excellent. We could finish uh, putting the four attachment screws in if we want, which is probably not a bad idea. And look, they've got the little promotional item. Hey, hey. Included with every one. So far, I've not seen any necessary cables yet, which I'm not expecting to really find any. You're saying there's going to be no HDMI cables? Um, I, if there is one in that box, I would be really happy to see that. But I've got to see a manufacturer, I think, other than, I want to say Vizio, include an HDMI cable in the box. Our 3D HD TV demonstration disc. Hey, hey. Oh, the wireless dongle. Mm. Yeah, the wireless LAN adapter. Kind of nifty. All right, the remote's set up. And for this particular Panasonic player, you're talking dual HDMI outputs, one for audio and video. They can go, say, right to your TV set for 3D output. And a sub-AV output that would be good for an AV receiver that doesn't yet support, say, 3D functionality, yet you still have that compatibility. They have a LAN port as well for connecting to the internet. One of, I believe, two USB ports that you can connect that dongle, the Wi-Fi dongle to, so if you want to go wireless with it. Coaxial and optical audio outputs, nice as well as 7.1 output as well for audio, if you analog audio output, if you need that. And your uh, component, uh, component outputs as well for video, as well as standard composite, which I'm, I'm not going there. <laughs> now, these happen to be the HDMI 1.3B cables, which should work with, HD, with 3D HDTV content. Now, we've connected everything. Uh, power's turned on, clearly, and we're using just one HDMI cable. Use HDMI whenever possible. It just makes your connections not only easier, but you get the best possible quality. Everything's on, and this is the very first menu you're going to see. I'm going to hit English for the, menu, or for the language selection. Home use or store use, this will determine whether or not your Energy Star mode is enabled. If you select Home, it is enabled, so we'll do that. I'm not using cable or antenna right now, so I'm just going to say Not Used. And here's labeling. If I want to label any of the inputs right now, I'm currently using uh, HDMI 2 for the Blu-ray player. So why don't I just put that on there right now and be done with it. Skip the rest of these. Go to Next. Network settings. I'm going to skip this for now. We'll come back to it later. We need to get it all set up on our network and probably see if there are any updates for this TV. That would definitely be something I'd recommend doing, one of the first steps. Set the clock, although you can probably do this when it's connected to the internet as well. Enjoy. That was easy. Pull up an input. Let's go to the Blu-ray. I have to say, so far so good. That was entirely too easy. <laughs> uh, I also say that once you get this TV set up, I would be tempted just to leave it on its default home settings, let everything run for hours on end. I typically find that if a problem is going to occur with this new hardware, it'll happen within the first day or two of use. Usually, that's the, if it'll blow up, it'll blow up quick. It just says that's play it. movie in 3D, play it in 2D. Okay, now we have the GIF Master, like, 3D viewing experience with the layers of clouds. That's actually got some depth to it. Got a nice little halo. There we go. Okay, I'm definitely seeing the depth. I'm really enjoying the colors. And so far I'm like, so concentrated on looking at the 3D, I'm not like enjoying the movie, because I love this scene. <laughs> that looks really solid. I, I mean, it definitely has the whole 3D depth, but do you, do you like feel it amazing, or do you feel it's like a gimmick? I, uh, for this kind of content, I'm, I'm good with it. Right. There's a lot of movies I wouldn't want to see necessarily in 3D, but for right. content like this, the 3D version of Casablanca you're down on? I, I, if they could incorporate those depth effects and really add, add, add that depth to the scenes, that looked really cool. Okay, I'm kind of tripping on the 3D effect because it feels, remember the Fresnel lens 3D picture covers and sure. children's storybooks? It kind of reminds me of that because it's still obviously 2D, although it has depth. 
I, I one, I, I'm not going to buy a new TV just to get 3D, but you need to make something clear to everybody out there. Exactly. The, the sets that do offer the 3D view aren't, they're only 3D with the content, and it's when you want it to be 3D. It's not 3D all the time. Mm -hmm. It's only when you're viewing that specific content, and even with that movie, it even offered you a, an option to 2D watch it in 2D. 2D. So don't, don't picture that, oh, I'm buying a 3D set, I'm going to be forced to wear the glasses all the time. No, that's not the case. It's more about, you know what, if you're buying some of the best TVs from some of the top manufacturers right now, they're going to have... They're, they're offering 3D built into it. Whether you want it or not, you yeah. will have, you, at the top of the line, you're getting 3D, the, the possibility of doing 3D if you want to buy glasses for everybody in the family. Totally. And like this set came with one pair, buy a few extra if you've got a larger family, of course, but that could add up. Most of the stuff you're actually excited about in this particular television doesn't have anything to do with 3D. No. Actually, some of the picture performance elements, that's what I'm really going to be looking mm -hmm. at. This is their top of the line model, and in the demonstration I looked at a few months back, the thing that really caught my eye was motion performance. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving objects had very crisp, clean edges, something I'm not used to seeing on plasma displays. And the, it really comes down to the pixel performance that they incorporated mainly for the 3D functionality, but it also does a lot of, has a lot of benefit for 2D content as well. Looking, looking forward to putting this through its paces. Mr. Heron's going to spend the week and possibly the weekend playing around with this beast. Full review of the VT25 next week. We'll get that done. And the player. The player, the player also I'm interested in, because that player has some some cool options for people with older 3D technologies so they can still actually use that older gear with a player like that. And that's something I want to get into in a little bit. So, Coming up next, we got some viewer questions right now. We want to thank one of our favorite sponsors. They're all our favorite sponsors, but GoDaddy.com has been with us since the early days. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com. People, we're talking 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to the hosting connection. That is the place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and your website. Remember, you can download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry applications to order right from your phone. You can manage your current domains and quite a bit more. Want to score a discount on your next GoDaddy.com purchase? Do us a favor, use the code HDN8, you'll get 10% off your order, and we're going to get a little credit to keep the show rolling for you every week. Please, people, check out revisions3.com slash GoDaddy for a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3, and use one of those HDN codes if you want to keep HD Nation rolling to your inbox every week. A viewer named Sam writes in, he says, what is your opinion of LFE, or Low Frequency Emitter? quote, silent subwoofers, or quote, force feedback from your couch or room. Do you think this is something every high-end home theater should have, paired with a real subwoofer or two? Do you think it's a novelty, completely unnecessary, and couldn't see owning one? Do you guys have much experience with these types of devices? Signed, Sam from Seattle, Washington. Butt Kickers, that's the brand name of one of the higher profile brands of LFEs, AKA Shakers, AKA Couch Vibrators. I could totally see owning one. I could see owning one the first time I tried them out like six or eight years ago. Essentially, they're big subwoofer magnets without the paper cone. Not the transducers like you buy that you glue onto a filing cabinet. Okay, that's your... what I was wondering. Or you put it on a table and the table becomes a speaker. They're very, very similar, right? But the idea though is essentially it's, 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 a device doing, it's literally like a device that that reproduces subwoofer range frequencies, right? But instead of moving a paper comb, which moves air, which strikes your eardrum, it's physically shaking the floor or the nice. furniture that you're sitting on, like right? It. They, it's, it, they're basically shakers is, is one good reason people call them. I like them, especially on serious 5.1 soundtracks with lots of explosions or like fist fights where there's those big low end poof. They're like visceral in a way that's slightly less likely to get you thrown out of your apartment than say, mm, let's say one of Shoe Research's ULS 15 quad drive subwoofer <laughs> kits, which is four 15 inch wireless subs that drop in just obscene amount of energy down to 10 hertz. Uh, that, that's the vomit range for my. Uh, yeah, if you don't have a, a really low big frequency, room, yeah. <laughs> you're going to feel that one. Yeah, especially since they're now selling the butt kick actually now sells their LFE kits. It's pretty cool. They sell you four feet to isolate your couch or your chair. One foot is a big one that's designed to actually mount the butt kicker to the transducer to. The other three isolate the furniture and the shaking from the rest of your house by nice. isolating it from the floor. It's a really nice touch here in earthquake country so you don't scare the hell out of the neighbors. 
That said, LFEs or butt kickers, they're complements to a solid subwoofer. They don't replace them. They'll definitely give it more impact, more oomph, more something. But, you know, you got to remember also, you either have everybody sit on the couch, yeah. or you have to have one of these for every single piece of furniture for everybody to get the effect, or you bolt it to your floor and shake your house apart. Um, it's that home theater <laughs> gift idea you might want to consider. Yeah. Just, give a box of them. A yeah. box of them. Hey, now, this that will allow you then to turn the subwoofer down a little bit, say, so you're not using that as much, and then... You still get a good effect out of it. It's something I've never had Maybe the less chance annoying to play to neighbors. around with. Well, okay, one, I've decided I'm going to call the butt kicker people up and see if we can get some in for review. <laughs> Look, if you've got 500 bucks for the LFE kit, it's probably a better deal than a raw driver plus the cash to, to buy a 400 to 1,000 watt amplifier. These things take a mother ton of power to do their thing. Um, if you're more the DIY sort, I should also point out, check out the Aura Pro Bass Shakers. Bass, bass Shakers. Bass. <laughs> the Aura Pro Singing Bass. The bass, fishing, baby. The Bass Shakers from parts-express.com. They're 40 bucks. They also sell over at uh, parts-express the Clark Synthesis Transducers. I love anything. It gets measured in pounds foot per watt. Essentially, they're like doing torque measurements uh, for measuring response from these devices. Because obviously, nice. right, you don't you don't measure, you know, no. decibels. You, you measure foot pounds, pound feet of response. Frankly, we're going to get some in. We're going to get transformers on. Uh, probably transformers would be a good one. I'd actually like to hear... Uh, I want a transducer for the pool. We used to have yeah. swimming pools where they'd throw that in there, like a speaker. Parts Dash Express. As you're swimming, you could just hear the sound from everywhere. And you, I like that. Parts Dash Express. Really? We're going to build you some transducers. Nice. We'll play around. It would be fun to play around with because at some point when you turn the subwoofer down, you start to lose a lot of its... You know what I mean? You end up with sort of a... If you turn it down too much, you may still be feeling it, but you're not hearing it, and I feel a disconnect when yeah. I'm feeling things that I'm not hearing. I could, they're far, I could see that being away. an issue if you turn it down too low. Definitely. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> uh, one last thing on our way out. Kino writes in, I know how much you guys love off-road racing and cars in all sweet HD. I just wanted to share this with you. I know you will like it. Driver Jeff Zwart in a Porsche GT3 Cup runs Pikes Peak and sets a new record for the Time Attack two-wheel drive class. Time of 11 minutes, 31 seconds, taking Pikes Peak Time Attack Championship for 2010. Oh. Yeah. Now, also, an awesome reminder that there's a lot of great HD content out there on the web. If you like racing, go watch the video. Thanks for the heads up, Kinu. Do appreciate it. Yeah, that's a fun one. Mm. Some friends of mine raced Pikes Peak, so it's Time really attack. cool to see it from the driver's perspective. GT3 Porsche? Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Hey, don't forget, people, Revision 3 has an official iPhone app. Now you can watch all your favorite Revision 3 shows no matter where you are in the checkout line, walking down the street, in the doctor's waiting room. Every single Revision 3 show is now available in the palm of your hand if you've got an iPhone. And, of course, it's all free. Find it in the iTunes store or go to revision3.com slash iPhone for more information. And we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. So send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. Please don't forget to follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash hdnation, and you can find links regarding everything we've talked about in today's show in the show notes on the show pages at hdnation.tv. And plus, you'll find all the links to subscribe to the show, so please subscribe and watch. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week.